We're trying to ignore it. The life form can assume the physical appearance of others. It can mold its body into almost perfect replicas of people we thought about. It can also mimic the original voices and mannerisms of its inspirations. We're quite impressed, actually, as to the level of detail and skill it has when shifting. It behaves like its inspirations, copying their personalities right down to the most basic quirk. We don't know how it can physically change. We just recovered it from a crater in Waswell a few months ago. Haven't gotten the chance to examine it. Our protocols prevent us from trying to make physical contact with it unless we know the risks of what we're doing. Who knows what unspeakable bacteria an extraterrestrial organism can be carrying? The current situation makes it difficult for us to do so. It could change into whoever it wants, but it just looks like our loved ones. Our children, our siblings, our spouses, parents, old friends, one-night stands, ex-girlfriends, anyone we know. It uses their voices to plead and to cry. It says the exact same thing over and over. It bangs on the observation window with its fists and head, Let me out. continuing to do so even Let after wounds out. form. Let me out. Blood that glows red Let stains the walls and the floor. Let we would out. send someone in to clean it, but we don't have permission to enter the cell yet. Currently, it's taken the form of Dr. Annabelle's infant daughter. The wailing coming from its throat is loud enough to break the window. The observation room. I can hear the life forms, vocalizations, the sorrow and the pain. It sounds like a normal human baby who's been separated from its mother. I don't think that she can take it any longer. Dr. Annabelle is sobbing from her chair. It hurts to see a child in distress, but it's not a child. And soon, someone's gonna break and let that thing out. But until then, we'll just try to ignore it.